To Dr. Samuel Johnson, Edinburgh, October 24th, 1775. My dear sir, if I had not been informed that you were at Paris, you should have had a letter from me by the earliest opportunity, announcing the birth of my son on the ninth instant. I have named him Alexander after my father. I now write, write, write as I suppose your fellow traveler, Mr. Thrill, will return to London this week to attend his duty in Parliament, and that you will not stay behind him. I sent another parcel of Lord Hale's annals. I have undertaken to solicit you for a favor to him, which he thus requests in a letter to me. Quote, I intend soon to give you the life of Robert Bruce, which you will be pleased to transmit to Dr. Johnson. I wish that you could assist me in a fancy which I have taken of getting Dr. Johnson to draw a character of Robert Bruce from the account that I gave of that prince. If he finds materials for it in my work, it will be a proof that I have been fortunate in selecting the most striking incidents. Unquote. I suppose by the life of Robert Bruce, his lordship means the part of his annals which relates the history of that prince, and not a separate work. Shall we have a journey to Paris from you in the winter? You will, I hope, at any rate, be kind enough to give me some account of your French travels very soon, for I am very impatient. What a different scene have you viewed this autumn from that which you viewed in autumn 1773. I ever am, my dear sir, your most obliged and affectionate humble servant, James Boswell. This light makes me look like I'm doing an alien autopsy, but that's okay. To James Boswell, Esquire. Dear sir, I am glad that your young lad, Lard, I guess the name is Lard, L-A-R-D, is born, and, and as I hope, put to the only difference that you can ever have with Mrs. Boswell. Footnote here from Boswell. This alludes to my old feudal principle of preferring male to female success in. I know that she does not love me, but I intend to persist in wishing her well till I get the better of her. Paris is indeed a place very different from the Hebrides. But, but, but it is to a hasty traveler not so fertile of novelty nor affords so many opportunities of remark. I cannot pretend to tell the public anything of a place better known to many of my readers than to myself. We can talk of it when we meet. I shall go next week to Streatham, from whence I propose to send a parcel of the history every post. Concerning the character of Bruce, I can only say that I do not see any great reason for writing it, but I shall not easily deny what Lord Hales and you concur in desiring. I have been remarkably healthy all the journey, and I hope you and your family have known only the trouble and danger which has so happily terminated. Among all the congratulations that you will receive, I hope you believe none more warm or sincere than those of dear sir, your most affectionate, Sam Johnson, November 16th, 1775. To Mrs. Lucy Porter in Lickfield. Footnote here. There can be no doubt that many years previous to 1775 he corresponded with this lady, who was his stepdaughter, but none of his early letters to her have been preserved. Foot, and, uh, and then a later uh, footnote from a later editor says, Many have actually been published since. Dear Madame, This week I came home from Paris. I have brought you a little box, which I thought pretty, but I know not whether it is property, properly a snuff box or a box for some other use. I will send it when I can find an opportunity. I have been through the whole journey remarkably well. My fellow travelers were the same whom you met saw at Lickfield. I'm guessing that's how you pronounce it. Litchfield, maybe? Only we took Baretti with us. Paris is not so fine a place as you would expect. The palaces and churches, however, are very splendid and magnificent. And what would please you, there are many very fine pictures. But I do not think they're a way of life commodious or pleasant. Let me know how your health has been all the while. I hope the fine summer has given you strength sufficient to encounter the winter. Make my compliments to all my friends, and in your fingers will let you write to me, or let your maid write, 
if it be troublesome to you. I am, dear madam, your most affectionate and humble servant, November 16, 1775, Sam Johnson. To the same. Dear madam, some weeks ago I wrote to you to tell you that I was just come home from a ramble and hope that I should have heard from you. I am afraid winter has laid hold on your fingers and hinders you from writing. However, let somebody write, if you cannot, and tell me how you do, and a little of what has happened at Lickfield among our friends. I hope you are all well. When I was in France, I thought myself growing young, but I'm afraid that cold weather will take part of my new vigor from me. Let us, however, take care of ourselves and lose no part of our health by negligence. I never knew whether you received the commentary on the New Testament and the travels and the glasses. Do, my dear love, write to me, and do not let us forget each other. And this is the season of good wishes, and I wish you all good. I have not lately seen Mr. Porter. Footnote here says that's the son of Mrs. Johnson by her first husband. Nor heard of him. Is he with you? Be pleased to make my compliments to Mrs. Addy and Mrs. Cobb and all my friends. And when I can do any good, let me know. I am dear madam, yours most affectionately, December 1775, Sam Johnson. It is to be regretted that he did not write an account of his travels in France, for as he is reported to have once said that he could write the life of a broomstick, so, notwithstanding so many former travelers have exhausted almost every subject for a mark in that great kingdom, his very accurate observation and peculiar vigor of thought and illustration would have produced a valuable work. During his visit to it, which lasted but about two months, he wrote notes of or minutes of what he saw. He promised to show me them, but I neglected to put him in mind of it, and the greatest part of them have been lost, or perhaps destroyed in a precipitate burning of his papers a few days before his death, which must ever be lamented. One small paper book, however, entitled France Two, has been preserved. It is in my possession. It is a diurnal register of his life and observations from the 10th of October to the 4th of November, inclusive being 26 days, and shows an extraordinary attention to various minute particulars. Being the only memorial of this tour that remains, my readers, I am confident, will peruse it with pleasure, though his notes are very short and evidently written only to assist his own recollection. And now we're getting meta with a uh, Boswell's Life of Johnson and now Johnson's Life of himself. October 10th, Tuesday. We saw the École Militaire, in which 150 young boys are educated for the army. They have arms of different sizes according to the age, flints of wood. The building is very large, but nothing fine, except the council room. The French have large squares in the windows. They make good iron palisades. Their metals are gross. We visited the observatory, a large building of a great height. The upper stones of the parapet were large, but not cramped with iron. The flat on the top is very extensive, but on the insulated part there is no parapet. Though it was broad enough, it did not care to go up. I did not care to go upon it. Maps were printing in one of the rooms. We walked to a small convent of the fathers of the oratory. In the reading desk of the refectory lay the lives of the saints. October 11th, Wednesday, we went to see Hotel de Chateau, or the Chatelet. A house not very large, but very elegant. One of the rooms was gilt to a degree that I never saw before. The upper part for servants and the masters was pretty. Thence we went to Mr. Monville's, a house divided into small apartments, furnished with feminine and minute elegance. Porphyry. P-U-R-P-H-Y-R-Y. Porphyry. Thence we went to St. Roch's Church, which is very large. The lower part of the pillars encrusted with marble, three chapels behind the high altar, the last a mass of large, low arches, arches, altars, I believe, all round. We passed through Place de Vendôme, a fine square about as big as Hanover Square, inhabited by a high, the high families, Louis the Fourteenth on horseback in the middle. Monville is the son of the farmer general, and the house of 
Chatelois, or Chatelet, is a room furnished with Japan fitted up in Europe. We dined with Bocage, or Bocage, the Marquis Blanchetti and his lady. The sweetmeats taken by the Machiness Blanchetti after observing that they were dear. Mr. Leroy, Count Menucci, and Abbe the Prior, and Father Wilson, who stayed with me till I took home him home in the couch. Couch. Bathiani is gone. The French have no laws for the maintenance of their poor. Monk not necessarily a priest. Benedictines rise at four, are at church an hour and a half, at church again half an hour before, half an hour after dinner, and again for half an hour after seven to eight. They may sleep eight hours. Bodily labor wanted in monasteries. The poor are taken to hospitals and miserably kept. Monks in the convent, convent 15, accounted poor. October 12th, Thursday. We went to the Gobelins. Tapestry makes a good picture. Imitates flesh exactly. Oh, this is a famous place, I think, isn't it? One piece with a gold ground. I think I just watched a video about this. One piece with a gold ground. The bird's not exactly colored. Thence we went to the king's cabinet. Very neat, not perhaps perfect. Gold ore. Candles of the candle tree. Seeds. Woods. Thence to Gagner's house. Where? I saw room nine. Rooms nine. Furnished with a profusion of wealth and elegance, which I never had seen before. Vases. Pictures. The dragon china. The luster said to be of crystal and to have cost... 3,500 L, whatever that is. I, I'm ashamed I don't know what the French, uh, I thought they were Franks, but. The whole furniture is said to have cost 125,000 L, whatever L is. Damask hangings covered with pictures. Porphyry. This house struck me. Then we waited on the ladies in Monville. Captain Irwin with us. Footnote here. The rest of this paragraph appears to be a minute, minute of what was told by Captain Irwin. Okay, this is Captain Irwin. Spain. County towns all beggars. At Dijon he could not find the way to Orleans. Crossroads of France, very bad. Five soldiers, women, soldiers escaped. The colonel would not lose five men for the death of one woman. The magistrate cannot seize a soldier but by the colonel's permission. Good inns at Nismas. Moors of Barbary fond of Englishmen. Hmm. Gibraltar, Gibraltar eminently healthy. It has beef for Barbary. There is a large garden. Soldiers sometimes fall from the rock. October 13th, Friday. I stayed at home all day. Only went to find the prior who was not at home. I read something in Canis. Uh, this is Melchior Canis, a celebrated Spanish Dominican who died at Toledo in 1560. He wrote a treatise, De Locus Theologics, in 12 books. Nick admirer Nick Multum Lado, which of course means I do not admire it nor much com commend it. October 14th, Saturday. We went to the house of Mr. Argerson which was almost wainscoted with looking-glasses and covered with gold. The ladies' closets wainscoted with large squares of glass over painted paper. They always place mirrors to reflect their rooms. Then we went to Julian's, the treasurer of the clergy. 300,000 L a year. Lira? I don't know. That's, isn't that Italian, though? I don't know, I don't know what the French uh, currency was back then. I'm ashamed. I could say Euro. Update it. But the house has no very large room, but is set with mirrors and covered with gold. Books of wood here, and in another library. At D. Blanks, bunch of asterisks, uh, uh, later footnote tells us this is D. Argensons. I looked into the books of the ladies' closet and, in contempt, showed them to Mr. T. Prince Titty, Bible des Fees, and other books. Bibliography days fees, I guess. She was offended and shut up, and we heard afterwards her apartment. As we heard afterwards, she shut up her apartment, is what that means. 
Then we went to Julian Leroy's, the king's watchmaker, a man of character in his business, who showed his small clock made to find the longitude, a decent man. Afterwards, we saw the Palais Marchand and the courts of justice, civil and criminal. Queries. Uh, or it says Queenie in a different manuscript. On the Salet. This building has the old Gothic passages and a great appearance of antiquity. 300 prisoners, sometimes in the Gaul. Much disturbed. Hope no ill will be. Footnote here about that. This passage, which some may think superstitious, reminds me of Archbishop Laud's diary. <laughs> okay, Boswell, whatever that means. So maybe, uh, maybe it sounds like Johnson maybe experienced a ghost in France or something, but he didn't write about it anymore. In the afternoon, I visited Mr. Ferrin, the journalist. He spoke Latin very scantily. Sc scantily is how it's... Scantily, I'm guessing, is what... It's, yeah, I'm sorry. But seemed to understand me. His house not splendid, but of commodious size. His family, wife, son, and daughter, not elevated, but decent. I was pleased with my reception. He is to translate my book, which I am to send him with notes. October 15th, Sunday. At Chiozzi, a royal palace on the banks of the Seine, about 7 p.m. from... Uh, about 7 meters or miles from Paris. I'm guessing meters. No. M. What is M? They don't have uh, miles there. So it must be meters, but... I'm sorry. I'm conversion, currencies, that's stuff, not my forte. Reading this book badly, that's that's my forte. The terrace, noble along the river. The rooms, numerous and grand, but not discriminated from other palaces. The chapel, beautiful but small. China globes, inlaid table, labyrinth, sinking table, toilet table. October 16th, Monday. The Palais Royal, very grand, large and lofty. A very great collection of pictures, three of Raphael. Two holy family, and a partridge in... I, I'm sorry. I, you can tell this part's kind of boring me a little bit. One small piece of M. Angelo, one room of Rubens. I thought the pictures of Raphael fine. The Thuleries, Thu, T H U I L L E R I E S. Or, there's an alternative trend, uh, spelling down here T U I L L E R I E S. Statues, Venus, etc. And Anchines Aeon in his arm. No, Aeon and Anchines in his arms. Nihilus, many more. The walks not open to mean persons. Chairs and night hired for two sous apiece. Pont Tournament. Pont Tournant. Austin Nuns, great. Mrs. Firmer, Abbis. Abbis. She know Pope and thought him disagreeable. Mrs. Blank has many books, has seen life. Their frontlet disagreeable. Their hood, their life easy. Rise about five, hour and a half in chapel. Dine at ten, another hour and a half at chapel, half an hour about three, and half an hour more at seven. Four hours in chapel, a large garden, thirteen pensioners, teacher complained. At the boulevards, saw nothing. It was glad to be there. Rope dancing and farce. Egg dance. N. Note. Near Paris, whether on weekdays or Sundays, the road's empty. October 17th, Tuesday. At the Palais Marchand, I bought a snuff box for 24L, a table box for 15L, uh, scissors, three pairs for 18L, so 63 Plus there's a 6 here, but it doesn't say what it is. 4. So that's uh, 63, 2, 12, 6. We heard the lawyers plead. Note, as many killed at Paris as there are many there are days in the year. Chamber de question. Thornell at the Palace Marchand. An old, venerable building. The Palace Bourbon, belonging to the Prince of Condé. 
Only one small wing shone, lofty, splendid, gold and glass. The battles of the great Conde are painted in one of the rooms. The present prince, a grand sire at 39. The sight of palaces and of any, and other great buildings leaves no very distinct image, unless to those we, who talk of them and impress them. As I entered, my wife was in my mind. She would have been pleased. Having not nobody to please, I am little pleased. Footnote here. His tender affection for his departed wife, of which there are many evidences in his prayers and meditations, appears very feelingly in this passage. I agree. Note, in France there is no middle rank. So many shops open this su Sunday is little distinguished at Paris. That Sunday is little distinguished at Paris. The palaces of Louvre and Thuliers granted out in lodgings. In the Palais de Bourbon, gilt globes of metal at the fireplace. The French beds commended. Much of the marble, only paste. The Colosseum, a mere wooden building, at least much of it. All right. Well, we'll continue with uh, Johnson's notes on his trip to uh, France next time in the life of Johnson by from Boswell.